For some pedal designs, such as a fuzz face style circuit, it is often a requirement to get low gain transistors, and if possible, NPN ones. This can be accomplished with germanium NPN transistors, but due to the scarcity and leakage issues that are part and parcel with germanium transistors, this may not be an ideal solution. So what other options do we have? Well, there is the 2N2369, which is a silicon NPN transistor. On DigiKey, you can pick them up for about $2.34, American, and they have a gain of around 80 and have a collector emitter breakdown voltage of around 15 volts. There's also the 2N3903, which costs much less at 58 cents and can handle voltage better with a collector emitter breakdown of 40 volts, but their gain usually ends up being higher than 110. BC108s are obsolete, but you can still find them relatively easily on the internet and have rather low gains, around and under 100, and a collector emitter breakdown voltage of 25 volts. These are all nice, but are still a little expensive and slightly hard to come by. What other options do we have? What if we want to dial in our gain to a specific value or range? Well, this is where a concept called piggybacking comes in. I first discovered this concept on an old forum post by R.G. Keen when trying to accomplish a specific task on something I was working on. So here we have a schematic of how piggybacking can be done. Basically, you're using Q1 right here as a diode to degrade the performance of Q2. This works best when the diodes, quote unquote, are close match to the transistor's internal base emitter diode. Hence, they use the transistors in Q1 right here instead of using other diodes. Because 2N3904s are common and cheap, we'll be using them for this example. As of how we degrade the gain, we use this resistor right here, R3. The lower the resistance, the lower the resulting gain. The higher the resistance, the higher the resulting gain. If we take this resistor right here and make it a potentiometer, like a trim pot, we can set this up as a variable resistor, and then we can adjust our gain variably, well, for the most part. Lastly, we add a small capacitor right here, which is about 100 picofarad, that connects to the collector and base of Q2 right here. And this will roll off the highs just a scooch, uh, like a germanium transistor would similarly do. By doing this, this whole thing right here becomes one big silicon NPN transistor with a low and adjustable gain. Here is the base of this big transistor. Here's the collector. And here's the emitter. Now on this uh, setup right here, I added a 2.2 mega ohm resistor here at the base of this big transistor to give it a four microamp signal. And then I also have this 2.472K resistor on the collector so that we can measure the voltage across it and determine its gain. If we go here, this is uh, kind of how the breadboard would look like here in this fritzing software. So let's uh, take a look about how this would work on a real breadboard. All right, so here's the actual real breadboard example of what we looked at earlier. What we're going to do here is we're going to take the measurements off that collector resistor and that should give us basically 1 one hundredth the value in gain in volts. So if we get a value of 1 volt, then that means it's a hundred gain. So let's take a measurement right now and we get 0 0.648 volts, so 648 millivolts which will basically give us a gain of 64. However, if we adjust this resistor, variable resistor, let's turn it down. Now what does our gain read? Our gain reads at 41 millivolts, or simply a gain of four. Let's turn it up. Here, I got a gain of exactly one volt, which we've already said before is 100. And we can crank it up even further. I think there's a little bit more left on that pot. And we got 1.473 volts, so a gain of 147. Not too bad. As you can see, we can just simply adjust the potentiometer and change the actual output of gain. However, there is some caveat here. For example, I'm gonna take out this transistor here and replace it with another.
Now we got a completely separate transistor in there. And what do we read across here now? Oops. 1.425, which is a different value than what we had before. So this is basically a point to illustrate that just because of tolerances on transistors themselves, whatever you have as a resistance value, though it roughly equates to where your gain is at, it won't be exact because different transistors will give you different gains. The differences are slight, but they're there, just to note. So here we have a stereotypical silicon NPN fuzz phase circuit. However, as the circuit is using the 2N3904s, the gain on this fuzz pedal will be much higher, the fuzz much more compressed, and the tone much brighter than the fuzz faces of the 1960s and 70s, due in part to the lower gain germanium transistors that were used back then. So let's apply this piggybacking technique to the circuit and see if we can fix that. Here we replace the two silicon bipolar junction transistors out of the fuzz phase circuit and replace them with two sets of piggyback silicon NPN transistors. The common opinion of gain for old style fuzz phase circuits is that the first transistor stage is best when it has a gain around 70 to 85 and that if the ideal amount for the second stage is somewhere between a gain of uh, 120 to 140. For a more compressed, squishy sound, uh, you can increase the first stage from somewhere between 90 to 120, and the second stage to somewhere between 150 and 190. That might be something that's desired. For me, I prefer the older, less compressed style, uh, so this is what I have for my schematic. Uh, I discovered with the transistors that I measured that if I set my variable resistor here to 39K, that gives me a gain somewhere between uh, the 70s and the 80s. And on the second stage here, the variable resistor trim pot, if I set it to about 90K, um, that gave me a gain somewhere between 130 and 140, which is pretty much the ideal of what I was looking for. Of course, I set my bias uh, trim pot here to get my 4.5 volts at the collector, and then the rest is just the, the common fuzz phase circuit. But let's actually uh, take a look at it here and give it a whirl and hear how it sounds. All right, so I figured it'd be necessary to play this with a Strat. So we have a Strat going into the pedal, which is using the two piggybacking sections here, going into our 10 minute amp, going out to a two by 12 cabinet. Here's a clean tone, we're on the bridge pickup. And let's turn it on, full fuzz. So it has that creamier, old-school vintage style fuzz sound, which is kind of what we're tackling with those HFE values. It also gives you the ability to play with the volume knob on your guitar still, so that playback still works great. So now you only have a little bit of breakup. And then you can always throw right back the full force. Plays still obviously well with other pickups. So all in all, this uh, makes it real easy to come up with what you might believe to be your own perfect fuzz face. Just dial in your HFE and go. So there you go. That's one way you can implement piggybacking to a classic guitar circuit when looking for low gains and a smoother sound. 
However, this idea could be applied to other circuits as well, especially other fuzzes and transistor-based overdrives. Does it replace the sound of a germanium transistor? Not perfectly, no, but it does come close, and in a lot of applications in general, I think it sounds pretty good. But you guys tell me, what do you think? Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like this kind of stuff, slap that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to support us, head over to our shop, www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and pick up a PCB or two. We do have some germanium components in stock as of this video, so if that's your kind of thing, uh, grab some of those as well. Anyways, I think I've rambled enough already. Cheers, and we'll see you in the next video.